Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays Collection. I'm your host, Mike, and I don't know why I'm doing this, but uh, anyways guys, today, um, this is a Western Roundup update of some new uh, Westerns I have to my collection, and Spaghetti Westerns, and, and, or, 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 and, you, you get the picture. So today, guys, I got some new ones. Um, I got about four movies I'm gonna show off to you guys. Uh, first off, first movie I want to show is a movie starring the great Richard Widmark. Uh, this is from 1956, 20th Century Fox. Um, they were really putting out the good movies. Uh, I guess the western was at its height um, in, in during the studio system. Um, because by 56, we had widescreen, we had Technicolor, we had, you know, some of the best writers and cameramen and everybody working in the business at that time. Uh, this is a movie written, I think is it written and directed? Well, it's directed by Delmer Daves, who's a really good director, who's done some really good stuff. Um, screenplays by James Edward Grant and Delmer Daves. Uh, but yeah, this is a great movie. Uh, this is called The Last Wagon, and I actually got a chance to watch this just the other night. Um, I've had it for a little while. Uh, basically, Richard Widmark is a um, he is a he is a man who's been living with um, the Indians for a while. I'm trying to think. It was it the um, uh, yeah the Comanche. Um, basically, he was adopted by the Comanche Indians. Um, he um, he had a, he had a wife and he had some children. Uh, they were massacred by the white man and everything. So he's kind of been on the on the fringes of society. Uh, he's just kind of been wandering and everything. And uh, he's uh, basically been he's won it. Uh, he's a won it man in many different territories and stuff. And there's a a price on his head, basically like a ten thousand dollar price. There's a big price on his head. Uh, so the movie kind of opens with uh, two bounty hunters have captured him, and uh, they're they're ruthless to him. I mean, they're uh, what's really cool about this is a darker western. This is a more mature western for the time, and um, I mean it's pretty graphic in the treatment uh, Richard Widmark gets uh, by this bounty hunter. Uh, but basically what he does is, um, I mean, there's some ruthless scenes. I mean, he just straight up stabs some people and everything. Um, Richard Widmark, that is. Uh, but they come, him and the bounty hunter come across a wagon party that are moving out, out west a little bit. I think they're going to, let me see if it says here. Uh... Well, they're basically, they're going through Apache territory to get to where they're going. Um, there's only like one way there. It's kind of like through this area and it's heavily uh, populated by the Apaches. So it's it was, it was known by like the Devil's Land or something like that, they, they call it. Um, so he's helping this um, wagon party out there. They kind of adopt him after him and one of the bounty hunters just has it, has it out and he ends up getting killed um, and they're basically trusting him to take them out, out west. Um, see, there's some scenes I just don't want to tell you about because it, it'll kind of give away the plot and everything, but man, I'll leave it at that. You guys do some research and maybe watch this movie and find it. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't think it's available on Blu-ray. This is a, uh, DVD release from, I want to say 2006, 2006. And it's one of those flippers where it's in full screen or widescreen. Uh, but Delmer Daves is a really good uh, director and writer. Um, I'm trying to think. Did he do the Delmer Daves? Yeah, yeah Delmer Daves uh, did some movies with Glenn Ford. Like uh, I just looked at like J Jubal, Jubal um, Cowboy. Three Ten to Yuma, the original and stuff. So he's done some really good stuff, um, and he was he was known as a writer before he became a director. He 
did some really good scripts and stuff. So he's a well, he's a, he's a really good filmmaker. And as always, Richard Widmar always turns in a solid performance. Um, pretty much any genre he's in, western or film noir, or whatever, he's he's always good. So there you go. There's a maybe a kind of a movie you haven't really heard of because I had never heard of it until recently. So the Last Wagon. Next up, this is a movie that's pretty famous. Uh, uh, this was done for the Samuel Goldwyn Company in 1940. Uh, this is basically a telling of the uh, Judge Roy Bean tale. Uh, Judge Roy Bean being this um, kind of a cow, kind of a cowboy comes out west. He kind of pretty much takes over this town and starts running it. He's a judge, jury, executioner. He's the sheriff. He's the He's everything, and they, you know, which you know, his this story has been told pretty well with you know different filmmakers. Um, one being um, uh, uh, John Huston's uh, "The Times of George Judge Roy Bean" with uh, Paul Newman, uh, "Life and Times," or uh, yeah. Anyways, but this is uh, probably one of the first tellings of this. This might be the first sound version of it but it stars Gary Cooper uh, the Westerner and uh, this time the Judge Roy Bean is played by uh, Walter Brennan which is uh, probably one of his first roles where we kind of get to really start seeing Walter Brennan I mean he had been around for a while but um, but yeah this is from 1940 and this is the tale of Gary Cooper basically comes into town um, they had, they had, these guys have caught him. He's, he's accused of horse thief, being horse thief, and he's tried. And uh, but he kind of the con, the conning of Gary Cooper conning Walter Brennan, uh, kind of out of his uh, during his trial and stuff by by him letting you know. I think he's totally scamming him the whole time by um, knowing the. Uh, Oh, man, the girl, the woman, the Judge Roy Bean is like obsessed with this singer. I think her name is, oh God, what's her name? Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, she's, he's obsessed with her. She's a singer, singer, uh, saloon dancer, blah, blah, blah. And um, he kind of says, yeah, I, I've met her before. I got a lock of her hair and everything. And so this gets the attention of, of uh, Roy Bean where he's like, Oh really? You know, and he's 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 just buying time. Basically, he's buying time because you don't know what Walter Brennan's going to do, what what his you know what he's going to do, if he's going to hang him, or let him go, or be friends with him. So he, he kind of keeps that tension going throughout the movie and stuff. Um, and it, this movie is directed by uh, William Wyler. This was one of his probably one of his well, no, I can't say it's his first big hit. I think he did. These three in 1936 with Joel McRae and Miriam Hawkins, also for Sam Goldwyn, was a big hit. That's probably one of the first ones I kind of think of uh, William Wyler. Um, and he had previously done, um, I think, what was it, um, the, the version of Three Godfathers, um, what was it, Hell's Heroes or something like that. One of those, um, but this was this was when he's really had a big hit with this, and this further establishes William Wyler's reputation in Hollywood and stuff. And it's a, it's a great movie all around. Uh, it's classic. Um, I believe it's now on uh, Blu-ray and everything. This is the older MGM version. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is from a screenplay by Nevin Bush and Joe Swirling. Uh, it also has uh, Fred Stone and Doris Davenport in it, uh, but yeah, other it, it's a it's a great story. It's an, just another version of the Judge Roy Bean uh, legend and everything, and it's 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 got its comic comical moments and it's got the you know serious drama at the rest of the time. But man, Gary Cooper is so so very um, so much charisma, and and also Walter. Uh, um, uh, yeah, Walter Brennan has so much charisma. Just the star-making roles, just the, the their voices and everything. Such a good, such a good movie. It's 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 one of those movies where you can put in and just you know watch it yearly. Just you know put it on. It's a re totally rewatchable movie. 
So there you go, the Westerner. Next up, this is a movie that I have heard of for years. I've never had a chance to watch it. And um, I just I just recently got this on Blu-ray. I think this is the actually the Australian edition Blu-ray of it. Um, and this is Region B. Um, but this is a movie... Uh, it's from a Larry McMurtry uh, novel, um, who you know when you know he wrote the Last Picture Show and some other classic uh, stories and movies. This was directed by uh, Martin Britt and starring uh, uh, Paul Newman. Uh, it also has Patricia Neal and Brandon DeWild, who uh, made better known as the the little kid from Shane. Uh, but now he's all grown up and he's uh, the nephew of uh, Paul Newman in HUD. Uh, it's basically a tale of um, HUD played by uh, Paul Newman. It's kind of these kind of a wild kind of a, kind of a free-spirited uh, cowpoke, I guess you could say. Uh, they live on a farm with with his father and nephew, uh, the nephew being Brandon De Wild and. Uh, uh, the father is, uh, I think, uh, Melvin Douglas. Yeah, Melvin Douglas plays his father, and uh, it's a really, it's a really good role. It's a really good movie. Patricia Neal is really good in it, also as the uh, she's kind of a, she kind of lives on their property. She's kind of their maid and cook and takes takes care of these three guys, um, and it's also got really very memorable. Uh, score by Elmer Bernstein and cinematography by James Wong Howe How. and uh, it's really nice it's really cool it's from 1963 it's a big nice wide screen Panavision movie uh, super cool um, I can't believe it's took this long for me to, to finally watch this movie but yeah HUD it's a really good movie it's available on DVD and I think an American release and it might be on blu-ray also from America, but I just happened to get a good deal on this. Uh, but yeah, HUD is definitely a movie you need to check out. Um, Paul Newman is great in this. Um, and you know, Paul Newman's not somebody that I, I really like all of his movies and stuff, but he's really good in this. This is probably one of his best roles, I think. It's, it's definitely one of his more underrated uh, movies, I think, as far as people thinking of Paul Newman. Uh, they don't instantly think HUD first choice, but yeah, very good movie, HUD. And finally, guys, this is a movie I also got recently. This is a Kino release, Kino Classics release. This is a movie from 1972. Uh, let's see, it's directed by Daniel Mann uh, and starring William Holden, Ernest Borgnine, Woody Strode, uh, Roger Hannon. And uh, Susan Hayward has kind of a smaller part in the movie. But this is a movie called The Revengers. And uh, it's really, really cool, actually. I, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Basically, uh, William Holden is a, is a kind of a, a, kind of a, does, you know, cattle, uh, does cattle drives. He's a cattle farmer and stuff. And he, 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 he just comes home from a long drive. Uh, meets his family and er, you know sees his family and everybody's happy and everybody's sitting around and everything and he kind of goes off. Uh, the, I think this is the next day. He kind of goes off, in, you know, up and up to the, the mountains or he goes to town or something. And he, he's not gone for very long and he comes back and um, his family's been massacred. Um, they just everybody's been killed, massacred, um, and. Um, he basically he's bent on revenge, and um, he he kind of gets a group of guys together, some guys that you know won't be afraid to die, or if 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 they die, it doesn't matter. Basically, they're prisoners. Uh, it kind of goes to like this prison camp. Uh, I don't know if it was on the Mexican border or something, and kind of gets these um, guys, these like these guys that really have nothing to live for. They're they're in prison for the rest of their lives. And they're going to get them and pay them a little bit of money and do this, you know, revenge tale and stuff. So once they get about, you know, halfway, three quarters of the way or quarter of the way, they find out why they're on this. This is just for revenge and 
you know, we don't have any, you know, we don't need to do this. Let, let's betray them and let's all take off, you know. I mean, he buys them all a horse, puts some nice clothes on them and gives them some money. And, um, you know, I was, when I first put this on, I was just waiting for that moment when they're going to double cross them and take off with the horses and the money and their clothes. And they could just start off new somewhere and everything, but... But it, you you have to watch it. It kind of it kind of builds a little bit, kind of in the middle, kind of builds up a little bit. And some some of the guys, you know, are going to stick with them and stuff. But yeah, they're they're just a low down, dirty bunch of guys, man, that you can't believe. And um, uh, William Holden has his you know one track mind and stuff. And there's some there's some scenes where it's like, whoa, that was shocking, you know. Didn't expect that and stuff. So yeah, otherwise it's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's it is it a classic. It's like, no, it's not a classic, but it's a lot of fun. And it's a good example of some of the movies made in the early 70s where they're kind of influenced by spaghetti westerns a little bit. So this movie is kind of like, is it is it a spaghetti western technically? Or is it, you know, is it just a, a new revisionist western, you know, inspired by the Wild Bunch and stuff? But, but you do get a couple of Wild Bunch uh cast members uh, reunited uh, Ernest Borgnon and William Holden so that's kind of cool to see them again you know riding riding on the horse and everything but yeah it's pretty cool and Ro Woody Strode is really good in the movie uh, Susan Hayward's part is really good also it's kind of a smaller part but it's really good to see her you know 20 years later away from her prime I think by this time she had retired and she came back and did this movie. It was one of the first movies she made in a while, I believe. Uh, but otherwise, good movie, solid entertainment. Um, if you're a fan of westerns, especially spaghetti westerns and some of the westerns made in the late 60s, early 70s, definitely one to pick up. So there you go, The Revengers. So there you go, guys. That's, that's uh, all the westerns I have for this little update. Just some new ones that I picked up. Really do, really do um, recommend uh, The Last Wagon and uh, HUD if you haven't seen those. Oh, these were all, these were all uh, first time watches except for the Westerner. I'd seen that before, so they were all new, new to me. So, um, so there you go. I hope you guys like this episode. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Uh, comment. Let me know what you thought about these uh, movies. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, give me uh, hit that hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you're notified when I release new episodes. So uh, until next time, guys, uh, watch a good western tonight. And, uh, take it easy out there. Be safe, and I will see you guys.